Hi everyone, it's been nearly two years since I created a playlist on my channel looking at how to secure fields in the ServiceNow platform. The last video in that series introduced column level encryption. Column level encryption is encryption at the application level uh, that permits the decryption of that data based on certain roles. Uh, one of the points that I made at the end of that video was the effect that column level encryption would have on your background processes, such as your flows and your business rules and so forth that rely on access to that data. Now, this topic recently came up in a group that's currently going through the Certified Technical Architect program. So I thought I'd like to discuss this in this video. Uh, in particular, look at the effect of column level encryption on five different processes. One, flows. Two, business rules. Three, scheduled jobs. Four, external REST API calls. And fifth and lastly, on your reports. The good news is, is that it's real easy to enable all of these processes to access encrypted data. So let's get started. So for these demonstrations, I'm going to go back to my vehicles application that I've used in previous videos in my channel. So I have a table here called vehicles. It's got quite a lot of records in here. And if we open up one of these records, we can see that I've encrypted three of the fields here. The VIN, the vehicle identification number, a PIN, and the city. I'm currently logged in as the system administrator. If we go to the vehicle admin user, I've actually given access to these three fields. In other words, if you have the vehicle admin role, you've got access to all three fields. I'm also currently logged in as another user with the vehicle user role. And at the moment, this user does not have access to any of these encrypted fields. So one thing you'll note here is that if these fields are configured in the list layout, they'll still show up here. But if you open up one of these records here, then they won't be shown, even if those fields have been configured to be displayed in that view. The other thing that I've got set up here is some cryptographic modules. In other words, the security keys needed to decrypt and encrypt uh, these three fields, the city, the pin, and the VIN. Likewise, I've got module access policies for each one of these three fields, linking that cryptographic module to a specific role. The role in this case is the vehicle administrator. The last piece in the puzzle to set up column level encryption is actually to specify which fields you want to encrypt. So for this, I've got my encrypted field configurations set up, again, for each of those three fields, which link the cryptographic module that we just saw to the specific field that we want to encrypt. The flow that I've got here is very simple. The trigger is when a record is created or updated where the model is EX30. And we are simply going to set the city, which is an encrypted field, to Stockholm. Now, by default, when you create flows in Flow Designer, if you look at the advanced options here, the flows are always run as the user who initiates the session. So in that sense, they're like business rules that flows will be triggered to run as the user who is currently logged on who has triggered this process. So if we go and test this, first of all, as the vehicle administrator, we'll put in the model EX30 and then a description here just so that we know that this has come from the vehicle administrator save the record, and as expected, this flow works because it's taking the, the role of the currently logged in user, uh, or the roles that that user has, which includes a vehicle admin role. And this role has access to the cryptographic module. So in this case, it works. If we were to go to the vehicle user, however, and fill in the same model and test this out, well, first of all, we don't see the city field because that user with that role doesn't have access to it. But if I come back to the list here, we can see that the record was actually created, um, but the city was not set. So in other words, the flow wasn't able to set that because it didn't have the required permissions. So how do we fix this? Well, it's real easy to do. In Flow Designer, we just go back to the same settings that we just looked at. 
and specify explicitly the role, the role that has access to that cryptographic module that gives access to the city field. So we specify the vehicle admin role here. Uh, go ahead and activate that flow once more and test it again. So in this case, it doesn't matter what role the user has, we're going to execute that flow with that vehicle admin role. So again, for the vehicle admin, there should be no change. That should work just fine. And we get the city of Stockholm populated there. If we go to the vehicle user, Again, put in the same details, EX30, and save that record. Again, we're not able to see the city field, but the record is created. And if we come back to our admin session here, we can see that the flow actually set the city to Stockholm, just as we expected it would. Let's have a look at a business rule now. I've got a very simple business rule here, just like the flow. It's going to populate the vehicle city when a record is created or updated, where the model is XC60. If I go to my advanced tab here, I've just got a simple script here to populate the city to Jutteburg. Uh, I've noticed that if I set field values using the standard actions tab here, that that actually doesn't work, even if the business rule has the necessary permissions. So I've gone ahead and used this little script instead. Now, with business rules, we're not able to explicitly define the roles that the business rule will adopt when executing. So by default, business rules will always execute uh, based on the, the user and the roles that they have that actually trigger this business rule. Now, I think there are ways in which you can um, uh, adopt a, a system user and, and impersonate other users, uh, but I found that this doesn't work for encryption if you want to decrypt so because we're not able to define or adapt our configuration in the business rule explicitly, we then have to go to the module access policy. So at the moment, we've just got one. And this module access policy has granted permission to the cryptographic module, in other words, the key that we need, only for the vehicle admin user. So... The only thing we need to do here is simply create another module access policy and give permissions to the business rule that we've just looked at. Now, one thing you'll need to keep in mind is that this feature is only available in column level encryption enterprise. If you just have the standard version, you're able to create module access policies based on roles only. But if you have an enterprise version, you can come here and create a new module access policy and this time specify a script and our script type will be a business rule. And we simply come in here and specify our populate vehicle city business rule. We set the result to track, in other words, to give access. And then we save that. So again, we can go ahead and test it as the vehicle admin user. We can put in the model XC60, put in a description there, save it, and we can see the city uh, has been set to Jotteborg automatically from the business rule. If we go to the vehicle user here, again, put in the same model, a description. Again, we save it. We can't see the city, so we'll have to go back to my system admin session here, and I'll just refresh the list here, and we can see that both records were created from the vehicle admin and the vehicle user, and in both cases, the city was set from the business rule. And the only thing that we needed to do is add another module access policy, which gives the business rule access to the cryptographic module that is associated with the key to decrypt and encrypt uh, the city field. Let's have a look at another process, this time a scheduled job. In fact, the configuration for this is basically the same that we needed for the business rule. So, if we look at our scheduled script here, uh, it's going to be executed manually and it's going to update all records where the model is EX30, where the year is 2024, and it's going to set the city to Malmö. So now for this, we just need another module access policy because at the moment we've only given access to that cryptographic module for the city, to the vehicle admin role, and to that business rule. 
So the only thing we need to do is add another module access policy, this time for our scheduled script. So let's go ahead and do that. We go ahead and set the script and specify that it is a scheduled script and then specify the name of it. Again, we set the result to track, we save it, and we can test it. If I go back to another user um, that does not have the vehicle admin role, so uh, but does have access to this script. So in other words, I'm testing this to see if this is going to work based on uh, access to the cryptographic module for this script. So we explicitly rule out any possibility that a user with some role that will give permission or access to this cryptographic module will be the determining factor here. So this user that I'm using now does not have access to the vehicle admin role, but does have access to execute this scheduled script. So let's go ahead and execute it. And if we come back to our list here, where the model is EX30, where the year is 2024, and just refresh it, we can see that the city was updated to Malmo. So we know that that worked. Again, simply by creating another module access policy. So in my fourth demonstration, I'm going to test the scripted REST API that I created some time ago uh, that is available as a separate playlist on my channel. So I've got a uh, API call here ready to go to query all vehicles for the year 2024. So I've got my authentication set up. Um, I'm using a user that has the vehicle integration role that actually grants me access to this table so I can uh, read records, I can create records, etc. Okay, so this is ready to go right now. So I'm just going to send the request and we can see here we get a response back. But you'll notice here in the response that uh, the values for VIN, country, and city have all been set to null because I don't have access to the cryptographic module with the role that I'm using to execute these API calls. Similarly, if I want to go ahead and create a new vehicle in this table and set the make model year, but also the city and the VIN, which are both encrypted fields, and I send that request, I get confirmation that the vehicle record was actually created. I've got a sys ID in response, but you can see that the VIN coming back, it also has the value of null, okay, because I don't have access to that. And in actual fact, in the record that it was created, it didn't create or set the values for city and VIN because I don't have the permissions to do that. So if I go to my list here and just update it, we can see we've got a new record here, but um, the VIN and the city are empty. Okay. How do we fix that? Again, we just create another module access policy. The user that I'm creating, that I'm sending these requests with, uh, has the vehicle integration role. Okay. So all I need to do is to go and create a new module access policy, again, for my vehicle integration role. And that's going to fix my problem. Simple. Okay. So we just did do what like we did before and create a new access policy, this time for a role, for the vehicle integration user, and then save that. And now if we come back to our Postman application and execute those same requests again, First, to get vehicles um, for the year 2024. So if I send that request once more and we look at the response, again, we're getting null values for VIN and country because the module access policy has only given us access to the cryptographic module for the city field and not for the VIN and the uh, country. Actually, there is no country. I'm sorry. So we've got the city. Um populated here uh, this time, okay, because we've got access to it now. Previously, that also returned a null value. And again, if we go ahead and create a new record, this time with the city specified, and send that request, we get a sys ID 
confirmation that the record was created. We still get the VIN specified as not because we still don't have access to that field. But if I come back to the table here and refresh it, you can see that the city was actually set this time because we've got or granted access to that role, to that cryptographic module, which has access to the city field. Okay. The final thing I want to show you is the effect of column level encryption on reports. So here I've got a basic report showing me vehicles by country. It's a bar chart. And you'll notice here also that I've got a drill down here uh, to the city. And again, the city is an encrypted field. So if I go to my vehicle admin user and drill down from the country Sweden, uh, I can see the breakdown according to the different cities in Sweden. And if I click on Stockholm, I can actually see the individual records that make up uh, this particular uh, report. Uh, in this case, to show me all vehicles where the city is Stockholm. Because as a vehicle admin, I've got access to the city field, which is encrypted. Now, if I go to the vehicle user here, okay, I've got access to the report, okay? I can drill down to Sweden and I can actually see the cities here, okay? But you'll find if I open up Stockholm again, I don't have access to the individual records that make up that portion of the report again because the city is an encrypted field, okay? So I've actually come to the filter here and actually just change uh, the city here to something else and just run it. So if I'm just you know, have a, a list for this uh, table and I want to create a filter based on an encrypted field, you can see I don't get any results. However, if I were to change this to country and specify Sweden, you know, I'm going to get the results here because the country is not an encrypted field. So that's it. It's real easy to adapt your background processes to column level encryption. In the case of Flow Designer, you just specify the role that you need in the Flow properties. And for the other processes, you just create a new module access policy to grant access to that cryptographic module slash key to the specific process or role that you want to grant access to. So thanks for watching, everyone, and see you next time.